In this video, I'm going to show you how to service the brakes of a 2017 Ford Fusion. Although not all cars are the same, this overview should help you diagnose and fix a car of your choice with very little difficulty. The steps for each car are generally the same, and they are remove the front brake caliper, keeping it attached to the hydraulic brake hose so you don't have a leak, removing the pad support and anti-rattle clips, and removing the brake rotor. Once we get everything off, we can machine or replace the rotors, we can clean and inspect the slide pins, we can replace the brake pads and get ready for reassembly, lubricate everything, torque the parts to specs, and then you're done. That's all there is to it. The first thing I'm going to do here is remove the cap from the bleeder screw. I'm going to attach the hose from my vacuum bleeder onto that bleeder screw. And then I'm going to loosen the bleeder screw up with a bleeder wrench. You should start to see the brake fluid run out of the hose like it is doing here. And then I'm going to retract the caliper piston. I'm going to use a pry bar to pry back the caliper piston itself until it is all the way in. During this time, I'm going to feel the caliper piston when I'm pushing it in. Is it difficult to push in or is it easy to push in? Because that's going to be one of my checks to make sure that it pushes in easy. I snug up the bleeder screw just very lightly. I'm just going to get the fluid out of the hose here so I'm not making a mess. So the caliper piston went in easy. Now I'm going to move the caliper back and forth. Will the caliper move on the slide pins? If it doesn't, that's going to be a clue to a possible brake problem. But in this case, you can see the caliper, the floating caliper here, is sliding back and forth really easy. <clears throat> the slide pins come in lots and lots of different sizes and shapes. The top left here, you can see the slide pin goes into the pad support, and then it's going to have those fasteners that hook the caliper to it. Some of them have a little rubber uh, seal at the end of them. Usually a caliper will have two slide pins, and only one of them will have the rubber piece, so you need to make sure you get that in the correct location. The one in the box there now is a uh, bolt that goes through a sleeve, and the sleeve bolts solid to the car, and the caliper slides back and forth. The same is true for these two. They bolt on to the, either the knuckle or the spindle, and the caliper slides on them. These three are for fixed calipers and really technically aren't slide pins. And you can see here by the shape of my side slide pin that it's important to get the correct orientation. The one on the left is square and the one in the other box here on the right is going to be a rectangle shape. And the orientation of that slide pin when you bolt it back together is really, really important. You can see from this picture here where the slide pin's been installed and the bolt has been bolted through the caliper into the slide pin, but there's a big gap between the slide pin and the caliper. That's because the orientation of the slide pin is not correct. The bolts will torque down and you know, you'll click your torque, you click the torque wrench or the beeper will go off if you have a digital. But in this case here, this is a very unsafe condition. The type of tool you need to get out the slide pin varies greatly. Here we have a Torx for this slide pin. This is a seven millimeter Allen, which is uh, quite popular. Here we have a reverse Torx or an e-socket to get this one out. So yeah, just more variation in that. The next step in our repair is going to be removing the brake caliper. The slide pins on this caliper are hidden underneath these caps. The tool used to extract them is a 7mm Allen. Make sure your ratchet is in the off position because it's, that's going to be backwards to you and that gets a little confusing, but make sure it's in the off position. 
You can see I'm going to crack them both loose with the long part of the ratchet, the handle. And then once they get loose, I can choke up on the ratchet a little bit and make it uh, a little bit quicker. These slide pins just need to be pulled out just a little bit further after you unscrew them just so the caliper will come off. There's a piece of retaining hardware on the outside of this caliper. You can't see it in this picture, but I do need to pop that off in order to get the caliper off. And you can see it's kind of giving me a hard time here. The inboard pad just comes out of the caliper piston. There's a little clip that holds it in there. Then the outboard pad is stuck to the brake caliper here, so I'm just going to tap it with a hammer to knock it off. I'm really not hitting this very hard. I'm going to take a brake caliper hook and just hang this caliper from the strut. Next thing I'm going to do is remove the pad support. Uh, these fasteners are very tight. Uh, over 100 foot-pounds is common, so tighter than the lug nuts. So a 3 8 ratchet is not something that's usually used in this spot. I'm going to use a half-inch drive long-handled ratchet in a socket. And then once I break them loose, I can switch to the smaller 3 8 ratchet. And you can see now I'm just really choked dirt up on the ratchet, so it's going really pretty quick right there. So you got some blue Loctite on the end of that bolt. So remove the pad support, and now the rotor is going to be free to come right off. There's nothing really holding that on. Yep. And take my slide pins out of the brake caliper. So we have our parts laid out here on a towel on the bench in a logical order. I have the brake rotor, the pad support, the pad support bolts, the anti-rattle clips, slide pins, brake pads, and just little caps that cover up the slide pins. I have them laid out in a way that makes sense. So if a first session group takes these parts off and another group comes in, in the afternoon, the parts are laid out in a logical manner and this is how you should be laying out your parts onto the bench. Now that I can have the pad support off the vehicle, I need to uh, get a 90 degree uh, die grinder with a brown cookie on it and I need to clean the rust and corrosion off from this pad support. When the brake pads are reinstalled they should not be tight in this fixture so I want to clean up all that rust and corrosion, uh, give it a little lubrication and then uh, it'll be ready for uh, reinstallation. You can see I'm using all edges of the cookie there 
I'm going to use the top, the bottom, and the side to make sure that it's all really clean. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side of the pad support. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the other side of the car eventually. You can see here in real time, it's taken uh, you know three, four minutes to clean that up. I'm going to use my finger uh, underneath the trigger to give it partial um, power. I don't need to have this on full blast, so I'm going to put my finger underneath that like I showed you there and regulate the uh, amount of power I give it. We're going to uh, clean up the fasteners that hold this on. There's some blue Loctite on the pad support bolts. And I do want to get the vice grips on the head of the bolt and want to clean these off on the wire wheel. You can see the difference here. The top one I just got done cleaning up and the vice grips are holding on to the head of that bolt. It's important when working with this tool that you don't have a lanyard or hoodie straps or long hair get caught into that because that could be uh, a pretty serious injury if that happens. Here is one of our uh, hot tanks for cleaning up our brake parts. The knob to turn it on was just there on the right, it's on a timer. And I open up the valve on the top and I can use the uh, scrubber here to clean up the slide pins. I want to make sure there's no dirt or corrosion on them when I reassemble it. I shut the machine off and then I'm all done. Here I have Loctite in the blue bottle. We're going to put that on the threads of the fasteners to keep them from coming loose after we give the car back to the customer. We have a tube of Silglide and that's what we're going to use to lubricate the slide pins. So it's off camera here, but all I'm doing is rubbing the sill glide on the slide pin on the smooth part or the caliper slides. The sill glide is not going on the threads. So you can see right between the arrows, that's where it got lubricated. Where the red arrow is, those are the threads that hold it in. And we're not going to lubricate those with sill glide. We're actually going to put Loctite on those. And here I'm putting the blue Loctite on the bolts. I probably have enough Loctite on there for 20 fasteners, but I got a, I got a little extra on there, but it doesn't take that much. I'm not sure why I put that much on there, but I'm going to put Loctite on those bolts. Here I'm cleaning up the hub surface of the brake rotor. It's important that when the rotor goes back onto the wheel bearing assembly, that there's not rust and corrosion causing the rotor not to sit on there flush. So I'm going to use this a 90 degree grinder with the uh, brown cookie and clean up that surface so it fits on there correctly. Here I have a little sill glide on a screwdriver and I'm just putting it inside of where the slide pins go. Sometimes this will be located on the pad support but in this case the slide pins go into the brake caliper and I want to make sure that the sill glide is inside 
of that area all the way around the outside. So I'm using my screwdriver to uh, put that in there. I'm also going to use the die grinder here with my prep tool to clean up the hub surface. Keeping in mind, I do not want to change the surface of this hub. I want the rotor to fit on there correctly. And if I grind off too much metal, uh, I'm going to be in trouble with the way this fits. After cleaning, I just put the uh, rotor back onto the hub. And I'm going to install it, the parts in the reverse order. And here I'm going to put on the pad support. Lock tight on the threads. Start the bolts by hand. Very important to start the bolts by hand so they're not cross-threaded. They should go in really easy. If not, we have to clean the threads. I'm using my 3 8 ratchet here uh, just to get the bolts in all the way. I'm not really tightening it up. You can see I have no leverage on the uh, ratchet there. I'm holding it really up close by the socket, so I just get them in nice and tight. Uh, here are the directions for this car, and you can see I need to torque them to 111 foot-pounds. And then also that picture of a trash can indicates that these bolts would normally be replaced. So, uh, again, I'm not replacing the bolts. This is a school car. I'm not really worried about it. But on a customer car, these bolts are meant to be thrown away, or recycled at least, and then having new bolts installed. So I have the torque wrench here. I have it set to 111 foot-pounds, and I'm going to torque these. You see my torque wrench is going to turn green there. I have a digital torque wrench, an electronic one here, so it's going to turn green. I'm going to double-check the fasteners because having them come loose is really not a good option for the customer, so I'm just going to double-check my work. Lock tight and torque, and they're good to go. The next step for me here is to put in my slide pins. I've already cleaned them and lubed them. And I've lubed up the caliper where they go, so I'm just going to put those in place. I'm going to lube up the pad support where the brake pads sit. So I want that area that I cleaned up and all that raw metal on there. I definitely want to get some lubrication on that. I want to make sure I don't get the lubrication that I'm putting on the pad support onto the surface of my rotor. So if I just machine the rotor or if I'm just not even messing with the rotor, I want to make sure I'm not lubricating the braking surface. Put in my outer pad. Again, I'm just putting on the used pads. The inboard pad, again, it's a little off camera here, but the inboard pad pushes into the inside of the brake caliper piston, and it'll sit firmly in the brake caliper itself. The caliper is in place. Now I need to start these fasteners, the slide pins by hand. Now I'm going to have to wiggle around this caliper because it's not going to be fitting on there exactly where you need it. So you have to push in with this socket and I'm turning the socket by hand. The bolts must be started by hand. If you start them with a ratchet, you're going to cross thread them. To speed things up for myself, I do have the ratchet out there now. Again, I'm hanging on to it right on the head of the ratchet so I really have no torque on it. I'm just snugging them up just so they touch, so it's just all together. And then I'll go back through with a torque wrench and torque it to the specifications. The specifications for the slide pins for this car are 22 foot-pounds right there at the top. So I'll set my torque wrench up and uh, get them torqued. This is my uh, snap-on digital torque wrench. Uh, these things are really pretty sweet. I have to admit, I was—I uh, thought it might be a pricey extravagance 
uh, at first, but the digital torque wrench is really, really nice. I'm going to set it up to 22 foot pounds. When the bolts start to get tight, you can see it turns yellow and then green, and then red if you get it a little bit too tight, which I did on that last one. got a little too excited there. But you just turn the uh, torque wrench clockwise until it turns green, and then it's tight. Part of having a professional job is making sure all the parts get put back on the car. So the car came in with those caps, you need to put them on there. I'm going to reinstall the retaining clip here. This is the last piece that I need to put on for my brake job. This thing is kind of giving me a hard time here. I'm fiddling around with it, but you monkey around with it a little bit, it'll go on. Now that everything's together, I'm going to loosen up the bleeder screw again because I want to make sure that I did not introduce air into the system. So I'm simply just opening the bleeder screw up, letting the fluid drip out, making sure there's no air right in that little part of the system. And then I'm just going to tighten up the bleeder screw a very little bit. They do not take much torque at all. Put on a cap. Again, that's part of having the professional job is making sure that all the parts are back in. Now here you can see a large gap between the brake pads and the rotor surface. I need to pump the brake pedal until the caliper piston pushes all those parts together. If this step is not done, you will not have any brakes when you first start it. And you can see here as I'm pumping the brake pedal, the caliper piston pushes out. You can even see it going back a little bit. That's that square cut o-ring pulling it back. But I'm going to pump the brake pedal until I have a firm pedal. And that's it. That's how you do a brake job on a uh, Ford uh, front wheel drive car. What you work on is going to be something very similar to that. And I think this video should help you out.